of its Mi-24 to the Super Hind Mk-2 standard. This was a low-cost version retaining Soviet-built weapons system, but replacing existing aiming systems with latest South African technology. In the course of related negotiations and further testing, the Algerians became attracted by the much more advanced Super Hind Mk-3 configuration. This included a removal of most of obsolete, Soviet-made avionics, only the air data system, rate gyros and radar altimeter were retained. This resulted in weight reduction of more than 1,800 kilograms. Instead, the South Africans installed a digital computer core, a new Doppler radar, GPS-assisted navigational system, the Arink Mil Standard 1,553 data bus, the Carl Zeiss Optronics Argos 410Z Airborne Observation System turret, a dual-feed, hydraulically driven Vector F2 chain turret with a 20mm jot cannon and South African-made ZT-3 Ingwe anti-tank guided missiles. Finally, helping Algerians solve often problematic supply of spare parts, 8 tackled the issue of logistics and relatively complex maintenance. The company made the Super Hind Mk3 user-friendly and maintainable even under most primitive conditions and helped Algerians obtain ability to completely overhaul their Super Hinds at home. Delighted by results, the Algerians renegotiated their order and had all 34 Mi-24s upgraded to Mk3 standard. While some of work was undertaken in South Africa, much of it was completed in Algeria. Super Hinds entered service in 2001. Although one helicopter was written off after an early training accident, the project proved successful beyond the imagination of most of the people involved. Several of Algerian pilots commented that they experienced no problems while re-qualifying, and pointed out the seamless integration of new components with the original helicopter as the reason for success of the project. Furthermore, they stressed, the weight savings considerably improved the hot and high performance of the Super Hind. Before soon, the type was blooded in combat against Islamist extremists in southern Algeria, and proved lethal beyond any doubt, especially by night. Unsurprisingly, the Super Hein Mk3 attracted lots of public attention abroad. Emboldened, the aid offered it to a number of East European air forces that were in the process of joining the NATO. At the same time, it intensified further research and development of more advanced variants, and began considering similar upgrades for the Mil Mi-8s and Mi-17s. For upgrades, that's when the troubles began. The Russians fell all over eight. According to some contemporary Russian commentators, the Super Hein Mk3 was dangerous to fly. South African inventions would place Algerian crews at great risk. Ironically, while explaining that the South African modification of the Mi-24 was little else but taking pieces from Ruivalk and putting them into the Super Hind, the Russians launched an effort to obtain the best available information about eight applied modifications. Failure of negotiations with Bulgaria and expenses for further research and development of the Super Hind drove the 8 to the verge of bankruptcy. The company then entered cooperation with the Ukrainian Aviacon but Ukraine placed no orders. Only Azerbaijan opted to upgrade its Mi-24s to the Super Hind Mk. 3 standard in Ukraine, the source for its original 10 Mi-24s. Even then, in an effort to save money, the Azerbaijanis selected a variant deploying Ukrainian weapons, instead of South African. Orders from several other potential customers failed to materialize. A number of these, Nigeria included, opted for much more expensive, yet far less efficient orders in Europe, instead. Eventually, 8 was acquired by Paramount. This company then entered into cooperation with Yakovlev. As could have been expected, the Russians proved not the least interested in further marketing of this project. Algeria and Azerbaijan thus remain the